Hello my dear students. So today I am going to start the next topic that is ecosystem. Okay. So I think you have already started in geography what is the definition of ecosystem. But still I am going to give the definition. I will define how, what is the meaning. Okay. What is the meaning of that ecosystem. So ecosystem is defined as a group of living and non-living things which are interdependent and found in a particular type of environment. So once again, here you have to understand what is ecosystem. It is defined as a group of living and non-living. Okay, group of living and non-living things. They are interdependent with each other and found in a particular type of environment. Like we, we people living in our environment. So we can see that many living things, non-living things are present in our environment. So every day we see living Living organism includes plants, animals, human beings. Similarly, non-living organism includes table, chair, okay, water and some other type of minerals. So we are interdependent with each other. Okay. And these constitute our environment. And with the help of that environment, we can see that our ecosystem is formed. So ecosystem, okay, ecosystem is destroyed by various factors nowadays we can see that our ecological balance has been disturbed so here uh, we are going to uh, discuss the causes what are the causes of that ecological disbalance or we can see that what are the causes of destruction of that ecosystem okay so you you have many questions in your mind like what are the things that disturbs our ecosystem so various things are there, various causes are there that disturb our ecosystem. So number one we have, okay let's start this next topic, destruction of, destruction of ecosystem, okay, destruction of ecosystem. So number one we have land use. land use pattern okay land use pattern so how the land ha has been used or how the land is being used nowadays so we know that the population are increasing day by day so once the population is increasing day by day the consumption of different types of resources consumption of resources means consumption of food items as well as other resources present in our economy or present in our country so use of that mineral resources maybe forest maybe water maybe other type of resources are being used or exploited too much and because of that too much exploitation of whether it is natural resources or some man-made resources what problem is arising that is disturbing our ecosystem or ecological balance has been disturbed so among all these one of the important okay one of the important factor is deforestation okay so land use okay one of the important factor is deforestation so nowadays there is a continuous removal or cutting down of the trees so why that trees are cutting down or why the removal of that uh, trees are taking place because of various factors there are various reason for this deforestation number one maybe for the agricultural purpose human settlement construction of dams uh, buildings factories industries mines and so on various factors are there because of that deforestation is taking place and because of this deforestation or ecological balance or the ecosystem has been disturbed so that is the one of the important causes of that destruction of ecosystem what is the important uh, factor that causes destruction of ecosystem we can see uh, we can say that land use pattern or how the land is being used so nowadays the land is being used for 
various purpose we see that the population are continuously uh, increasing and there is a huge demand for the various types of resources maybe food resources okay as well as other types of mineral resources water okay uh, uh, maybe other resources like different gold no and um, other minerals so due to that the land use pattern is being changed now due to that what is happening deforestation is taking place so what what are the reasons for this deforestation human settlement okay then uh, we can say that for agricultural purpose since the population is increasing so there is a huge demand of food grains so in order to cultivate more amount of food grains there is no other option than deforestation so people are continuously cutting down the trees and clearing the forest for the agricultural purpose similarly for the construction of dams we are continuously uh, uh, clearing the forest and for other purpose also like requirement of raw materials for different industries for plywood no plywood industry for paper industry what is happening deforestation is taking place now the second causes of okay destruction of ecosystem is industrialization so we know that industrialization industrialization means rapid growth of industries due to rapid economic growth and industrialization there is a huge exploitation of mineral resources as well as different types of resources so once the resources is being exploited in a large amount what will happen our ecological balance will disturb ecosystem will disturb and due to that ecosystem we are facing lots of consequences okay now how the industrialization is affecting or polluting our environment or disturbing our ecosystem so various waste okay generated by the different industries that causes a uh, pollution to our environment our environment is continuously polluting and because of that what is happening different different adverse impact is coming on our economy or in on our country so our country is facing lots of adverse impact of that destruction of ecosystem so who will be the final who will face the problem of that destruction of this ecosystem we people okay we people will be responsible for that and we will be we will be facing lots of problem in our life sometimes what happens that due to mining no due to mining they are digging up and finding all the different mineral resources and because of that they are disturbing our ecosystem okay as i said how the mining is affecting or disturbing our ecosystem in a same way this manufacturing sector or manufacturing units is also affecting or disturbing our ecosystem so we can see that the manufacturing units they are discharging various type of chemicals okay and that chemical causes water pollution maybe soil pollution and that hampers the ecosystem next one automobiles so automobiles is also responsible for a destruction of our ecosystem we can see that the various types of pollution okay pollution arising from this automobiles the emission of carbon dioxide carbon monoxide etc so this all the uh, gases okay poisonous toxic gases is also affecting our ecosystem now third cause is, is urbanization so urbanization means rapid growth of population okay rapid growth of population or we can say that when the population of a country is increasing and due to that increase in population if the forest is being cleared okay more construction of roads railways dams bridges etc if all these things are taking place means conversion of rural into urban or towns and cities that is called actually urbanization so when the urbanization takes place what happens that the ecological balance gets disturbed okay the, there will be the loss of biological diversity so these are the reasons of urbanization okay next reason is shifting cultivation so shifting cultivation means 
especially it happens in the case of tribal population or that is also called zooming cultivation so a group of people living in one particular area they will use that land for the cultivation okay once the fertility of soil will be exhausted then they will move to the another area and try to find out the fresh soil for the fresh cultivation so in that way also what is happening they are continuously exploiting all soil resources and that also causes that also causes ecological disbalance so sometimes what they do that in the case of this shifting cultivation once they are uh, using a particular land in one area once the fertility of the soil is exhausted they will they will move to the other area and they might clear the forest okay if there is a forest they will clear the forest cutting down of the trees and again they will start cultivation so due to that also the deforestation is taking place and that have huge impact on our ecosystem or ecological uh, disbalance will takes place ecosystem will be disturbed okay next one we have dwelling units okay so to accommodate the migrating population in cities more and more dwelling units are being constructed to meet the increasing demand for transport facility this involves conversion of crop lands okay and of forest land into urban settlement so due to that dwelling units what is happening that there is a continuous uh, conversion of crop land into construction of maybe transport facilities maybe housing facilities similarly uh, what is happening forest area is also converted into dwelling units so they are construct they are using that land for the construction of railways roads okay maybe for the residential houses okay now due to that what is happening our ecosystem is getting disturbed so these all are the reasons or we can say that these all are the causes of destruction of ecosystem now i'm going to start next topic that is labor so labor is also one of the important factors of production so we have done in the previous case that land is a passive factors of production because in order to operate on that land what is needed labor is needed so labor is what type of factors of production active land is active factors of production so we uh, sorry labor is active factors of production once again listen land is passive factors of production and labor is active factors of production because in order to operate that machinery capital or land what is needed at least labor is needed and because of that labor is called active factors of production now we have to come to the definition what is labor so labor is defined as both any type of physical or mental effort used in the process of production okay so we can see that labor is the amount of physical mental and the social effort used to produce goods and services in an economy whenever any workers if that workers is using his physical or mental effort in any kind of production in an economy then that is called labor okay this is the definition once again how to define labor when workers are using their physical or mental effort in the process of production in an economy that is called labor now that labor is also of a different type so now we will move to the classification of labor classification of labor now generally this labor is classified into three group one is skilled skilled semi semi skilled and on skilled now before starting this classification of labor i forgot one thing to mention first labor so this labor as i said it may be physical or mental effort so i forgot to explain this physical and mental effort so whatever effort is called physical effort when when 
any worker is using his power to carry on his work like construction workers okay porters or coolie when porters or coolie they are using their physical effort or construction workers the one who is carrying bricks the one who is carrying carrying sand the one who is carrying uh, uh, some rods so this type of labor is called physical effort now what is mental effort mental effort means the workers one who is using his brain one who is using his knowledge talent in the process of production so that is called mental effort so we'll come under the, uh, who will come under that type of labor doctors engineers lawyers that all comes under this worker or the labor who is providing their mental effort in the process of production okay so this is the difference between physical effort and mental effort now i'm moving to the classification of this labor so labor is classified into three parts skilled semi skilled and unskilled here you have to understand what type of labor is called skilled labor what type of labor is called unskilled and semi skilled so let's start with this skilled labor so skilled labor are those type of labor who has gone for long time period of training that means the one who has gone for training for at least three or four years so the one who has gone for training time period may be three to four years so the workers who have gone for long period of training are called skilled labor so who will come under that who are trained labor doctors engineers lawyers even teachers they all are the example of skilled labor because they have gone for training at least for three to four years so here examples are doctors engineers lawyers etc now next we are moving to the semi skilled labor so what type of labor is called semi skilled labor so the workers who has gone for training for a very short period of time maybe for one month maybe for two months maybe for maximum six months not more than that so any worker who are trained only for very short period of time maybe for one month two months three months or less than six months so they are categorized under this semi skilled labor now who will come okay who will what type of labor will come under that so taxi driver okay taxi driver a waiter a waiter carpenter etc so they all come under what type of labor semi skilled labor now last one we have on skilled labor so on skilled labor are those labor who have not gone for any kind of training okay they are untrained they are without any kind of training they don't have any professional knowledge whereas in the case of this skilled and the semi skilled labor they have professional knowledge as well as they are experienced whereas in the case of this on skilled labor he don't have any kind of training without any experience that means experience is also not there plus they are not involved in any kind of profession okay they are not professional they are untrained and they are not experienced also so who will come under that on skilled labor so specially porter p o r t e r porter coolies construction workers construction workers workers like the one who is carrying bricks cement sand etc they come under this unskilled labor 